Now here are three simple tips you can learn from my forehand to help improve your forehand. Number one is take the racket back with both hands and try to get the position, you'll see it right here, where your hand, your elbow, and your shoulder are all the same height. This is really important because it's gonna help you to turn high, but it's also gonna make sure that the racket doesn't break the plane. Breaking the plane is when the racket goes too far back. So by actually having this elbow up, it makes sure that the racket does not cross this line. You'll actually see this. Watch how my racket, let me actually draw that line again. Watch how my racket does not touch the yellow line. So my racket is staying on the hitting side of the body. So take your racket back with both hands on, hitting hand, your elbow, and your shoulder all the same height. Now the second idea is when you drop the racket, close the face. It's easier to see this from the back. So film yourself both from the side view and back view so you can review the footage and you know what you should be doing and then you can make sure you are doing it. Notice my racket is closed. This is when the butt cap is pointing at the ball. When your racket face is pointing down prior to hitting, that's what gets your strings to face forward when you swing up to contact. You can see my strings are facing forward and I'm swinging up to the ball. If you're struggling with consistency and the ability to get topspin, make sure that you are closing your racket face from below contact and that you are swinging up. And the last thing is if we go to contact, and let me move this one back just a little, I want you to notice my left hand. From the side view right here, it looks like I'm waving to the opponent. And from the back view, my non-hitting hand is actually visible over my non-hitting shoulder. This is a really important cue to make sure that you are lifting the racket up and able to turn your hips into the shot. What commonly happens here is players will drop their non-hitting hand as they're striking the ball and they end up hugging themselves, which really impedes hip turn. If you notice my non-hitting hand, my left hand is actually rising Watch my non-hitting hand rise as I'm hitting the ball. Make sure that it's rising, and you can actually help that to occur, making sure that you're able to turn your hips, by catching the racket in your non-hitting hand up higher than eye level. Now, to help me demonstrate this, I've got the Topspin Pro here. To get your own, you know what to do. Grab my affiliate link in the description below. I'm also going to pin it in the first comment. It would mean the world to me if you got a Topspin Pro for at-home practice using my link, so thank you so much. When you take your racket back, you wanna take it back with both hands. Both hands take the racket back. It's not your arm. You know, you see it's a forehand and you pull the racket back with your arm and just reach back. That's not what you wanna do. You wanna rotate the body, turning that front shoulder to your opponent. That coiling allows for uncoiling later. So take the racket back with both hands. You can practice, and if you're a coach, just have your students do this. Rotate and have them take it with just their non-hitting hand on the throat of the racket so they can practice that. And then they can feel what it's like. Oh, both hands on the racket during the take back. That's for the coiling, which gives you uncoiling. Now, the second part to this is you want your hand, elbow, and shoulder all the same height. By turning high, it can give you racket speed, but it also, and I'll show you this from the back, allows you to not break the plane. See, players who take their racket back, back here, often have a low elbow. Watch the fix here. This is Vic Braden, right? <laughs> Vic Braden 101. If I raise my elbow, look how it puts the racket on the hitting side of my body. Low elbow, racket's on the wrong side. High elbow, racket's on the correct side. So if you typically have too big a backswing, work on taking the racket back, showing your armpit to someone behind you, and have your hand, elbow, and shoulder all relatively the same height. That naturally keeps the racket on the chest side of your body and can help you handle speed because your swing isn't gigantic. The next idea, we want to, from here, drop the racket down, so don't go back over here. We want to drop the racket down and tilt our strings toward the ground. In order to be able to swing up with confidence when hitting a topspin forehand, we need the strings to tilt toward the ground in order to allow that to happen. See, when your strings tilt down prior to hitting the ball, as long as you're below contact, when you swing up to contact, your strings will face forward, hitting the back of the ball, sending the ball towards your target. 
See, most players know this. They know, okay, when I hit the ball, I want my racket facing toward my target and, and vertical. So what they do is they end up having their racket straight up and down in the back, thinking that that's gonna give them the racket face they want. The problem is our arm <laughs> is going to rotate like this. It's nothing but a radius of a circle, right? So as we rotate our body and we go to hit the ball, our racket face will open up by the time we make contact. So that racket that was straight up and down is now facing up. So what's the fix? We rotate in order to try to fix that. And we try to rotate our racket. And if we rotate too late, the ball goes out. If we rotate too early, the ball goes in the net and we're more frustrated than before. So if you simply just tilt your strings down toward the ground prior to hitting, that naturally gives you the square racket against the back of the ball that you need in order to hit topspin. You can see the ball spin on the Topspin Pro. So it gives you that instant feedback. You can see it and feel the friction of the racket going up the back of the ball with the string. So I turn high with both hands, I drop below contact and close, and then I spin, I just hit the ceiling. Last one. So here's the last idea. I want you to catch your racket higher than eye level when you're done. I always get people in the comments, oh, Ryan, this isn't 1978. What are, what are you doing? Um, what, why aren't you teaching the modern forehand? Okay, when you watch the best players in the world, as they're striking the ball, their non-hitting hand is rising. Their non-hitting hand rises as they hit. What you do not want to happen is the non-hitting hand to drop. It's important, remember we coiled, it's important that we uncoil into the shot. When the non-hitting hand is dropping, which I would say probably 90% of all recreational players, just in my 25 years of coaching experience, I would say 90% of recreational and club players drop their non-hitting hand as they hit the ball. They'll have their hand out and then they drop. When that happens, your hips can't turn because who should your hips listen to? this arm going this way or this arm going this way. And that's when you see people hug themselves, they have no rotation. What you actually want is the non-hitting hand to rise as you're striking the ball. And this is why I tell people to wave to the opponent as you're hitting the ball. So film yourself hitting a forehand and at contact it should look like you're waving. It's not like your hand's in your pocket. You wanna be waving to your opponent as you strike. An easy way to make sure of that is to just catch the racket. Now, what you don't want to do is this and try to fool the ball. The ball knows that you hugged yourself and then you try to fool it and say, oh, I caught up here. No, no, no. You want your non-hitting hand to kind of get up here even before the racket. Let me say that again. You want your non-hitting hand going up and I'm talking about catching the racket higher than eye level. Well, which should get here first, your non-hitting hand or your racket? I'm going to tell you your non-hitting hand should get there and then you add the racket. So take the racket back with both hands, hand, elbow, shoulder, the same height, drop below the ball and close it so you can swing up for topspin and raise your non-hitting hand as you strike to make sure you are able to turn your hips. And an easy way to make sure that happening is to catch the racket up higher than eye level. Now, if you're looking for people in your local area, maybe some stronger opponents, stronger practice partners, maybe you're kind of uh, you know, stuck with the same group of people and you're the best player in that group. You don't want to be always the best player in a group. You want to find stronger people and people are going to give you a challenge. So find people in your local area to play matches against, to practice with, or even find a coach who's close to you using my link for Play Your Court. And the link is playyourcourt.com slash two minute tennis. When you use my link to sign up, you get 50% off. Work on these four hand ideas and there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.